The Amhara people have a millennia-old legacy of governance that has nurtured centralized authority, ensured political stability, and enriched a vibrant cultural identity. We do not want war, but if we are attacked, we fight to the last drop of our blood to protect our home. Preserving and nurturing one's own system of governance, culture, religion and tradition demands a resilient spirit and resistance to invasion or oppression. This is where the Fano tradition comes into play. In Ethiopia, there was great rejoicing in the capture of tanks. Mussolini's Italy, in alliance with Hitler, launched a devastating invasion of Ethiopia, unleashing a massive onslaught with 800 tanks, 2,000 artillery pieces, 595 aircraft and 650,000 soldiers. The overwhelming force presented a formidable challenge to the Fano resistance. Despite lacking similar military capabilities, the Fanos stood firm, as surrender was never an option for them. They faced poison gas and superior air power with remarkable bravery. This resolve in the face of such adversity speaks volumes about the Amhara people's strength and their determination. Following the end of World War II, many Fano veterans played pivotal roles in the Korean War. Ethiopia swiftly formed the Kagnu Battalion and deployed it to Korea under the UN flag. Throughout their deployment, the Kagnu Battalion achieved remarkable success, earning numerous honors, silver star medals, and several bronze star medals, along with a presidential citation. They achieved victory in all 238 direct combat engagements, displaying remarkable courage. They never abandoned a fellow soldier. The Kagnu Battalion engaged in intense close quarters combat, particularly around Old Baldy and Porkchop Hill, bolstering UN forces and effectively halting communist advances. Despite facing challenges with Korean winters and a language barrier, their resolute determination on the battlefield earned them deep respect. The US 7th Infantry Division swiftly acknowledged their capabilities, seamlessly integrating them into joint operations. Their story exemplifies the Amhara people's enduring spirit and their significant contribution to global efforts. The US decorated many Kagnu Battalion personnel for the intense fighting alongside US troops of the 7th Division, Ethiopian troops receiving nine silver stars and several dozen bronze stars. Two officers received Ethiopia's highest award for gallantry, being appointed Knights of the Order of Emperor Menelik II. Under heavy attack between the 15th and the 18th of May 1953, the Kagnu troops repulsed three strong Chinese assaults, defending a feature codenamed Hill Yoke. By the 20th of May, fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat took place around Hill Yoke between Ethiopian and Chinese troops the Kagnu Battalion killing at least 110 of the enemy but keeping hold of their positions. For this achievement, the battalion was awarded by the South Korean president a citation. These actions were part of the wider Battle of Porkchop Hill, one of the United States Army's epic actions during the Korean War. It's to raid North Korean lines and knock out outposts. When the U.S. 9th Corps initiated an operation to capture Gyeongsong, the Kagnu Battalion attacked and occupied Hill 700 near Sangyon on the 21st of September 1951. The following day, backed by U.S. artillery and air support, the Ethiopian Battalion stormed and captured Hill 602. These two days of operations resulting in 179 enemies killed. U.S. President Harry S. Truman would award the Kagnu Battalion a Presidential Unit Citation for these actions. 